this is one of multiple videos discussing multi-area OSPF. This is both a troubleshooting as well as an explanation video. We've been told in this topology that router 1 on the left is not able to ping router 6 on the right. Router 1 is running EIJRP. So the command show IP protocols shows us that the only routing protocol enabled on this router is EIJRP. On router 6, show IP protocols shows us that OSPF is enabled on router 6. We can also see that the router has a loopback address of 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. So quadruple 6. Can router 1 ping that address? And the answer is no. Pings are failing. I'll disable IP domain lookup to speed things up and let's do a trace to that loopback. At the moment, the trace is going nowhere. I'll do a debug IP packet to see what happens and I'll ping with only one ping to that address. So ping 6.6.6.6, .6 repeat one. And let's do that again. And I'll turn off debugging. Notice here, source 1.1.1.1, pinging 6.6.6.6. .6 We're told that it's unroutable. These other messages are EIJRP messages. The ping is unsuccessful. So show IP route shows us that that network doesn't exist in the routing table. If we try and ping 10.1.5.1, that also fails. And so does 10.1.5.2. So we can't ping this network or the loopback of router 6. What about the loopback of router 5? So we're able to ping the loopback of router 5, but not the loopback of router 6. And if we trace to 10.1.5.1, the trace fails immediately because the route doesn't exist in the routing table. 10.1.4.0 does exist in the routing table. So we can ping 10.1.4.1 as well as 10.1.4.2. In other words, we can get to this network. Now again, we are running EIJRP on this router. So these routes have been redistributed from OSPF into EIJRP. Let's look at router two and see if router two can ping the loopback of router six. It's not able to do that. So show IP route. We are not seeing that loopback in the routing table. So let's have a look at router five. Can router 5 ping the loopback of router 6? The answer is it can. So show IP route. It's able to ping the loopback of router 6. The loopback exists as an OSPF route in the routing table of router 5. What about router 4? Ping loopback of router 6. That ping fails. Show IP route that loopback doesn't exist in the routing table. So let's have a look at router 5 by using the command show IP protocols and tell me if you can see the problem by looking at this output. What do you think is the problem when you look at this output? And to give you a hint, I'll do the same command on router 4. So show IP protocols on router 4. There's the output for router 4. Here's the output for router 5. What's the problem with this configuration? Okay, so notice the following. It's routing for areas 1 and 2. This router has interfaces in multiple areas, but doesn't have area 0 configured. So show run, section OSPF, shows us that the router 
is configured for area one and area two, but is not configured for area zero. Router four is configured for area one. It's a requirement in OSPF that area zero be connected to other areas. In other words, this is configured as area one, this is configured as area two, but area two is not adjacent or bordering area zero. That's a problem. If we look at router three over here, show IP protocols, we can see that this router is configured as an area border router. It has interfaces in area zero and interfaces in area one. So show IP OSPF interface brief shows us that gigabit 00 is configured in area zero, gigabit 01 is configured in area one, so that looks good. But router five isn't configured in that way. So show IP OSPF interface brief. Notice it has interfaces in area one and area two, but not in area zero. That's why router one can ping the loopback of router four and the loopback of router five, but not the loopback of router six. Because OSPF is correctly configured with area zero and area one over here, it works, but here we have a problem we need to create what's called a virtual link between router three and router five. So we have to essentially pull or extend area zero from router three to router five to make router five an area border router. So we will be essentially creating a tunnel where area zero traverses across area one to router five. Area zero is gonna be tunneled across area one so that router five becomes an area border router, which means that area two is adjacent to area zero. That is required in OSPF. All areas have to be adjacent to area zero when you have multiple OSPF areas. So show run section OSPF we can see the configuration of router three. Now, when you create your virtual links, you have to configure the other side using the router ID, not the IP address of the router, but the router ID. So the command show IP OSPF interface will show us the local router's router ID. So the router ID is 3.3.3.3, .3 .3 .3. You can also use the command show IP OSPF, and we'll be able to see that router ID. So notice router ID is 3.3.3.3. .3. On router five, show IP OSPF. The router ID is 5.5.5.5. .5 so back on router three, show run section OSPF. That's the configuration of OSPF on router three. And that's the configuration of router five. So on router three, router OSPF one, area one. This is the area that we are traversing. A virtual link. And the neighbor's router ID is 5.5.5.5. .5 .5 .5. Now there are options where you can set authentication and other options, I'm not gonna do that. I'm simply gonna create the virtual link. So router OSPF one, area one, a virtual link, and the router ID that we'll connect to on this side is 3.3.3.3. .3. So show IP OSPF neighbor. You can see that a neighbor relationship was established using virtual link zero. We can see that over here. No election takes place on a virtual link. 
show IP OSPF neighbor. On this side, we can see something similar. A neighbor relationship has been formed from router three directly to router five through the OSPF virtual link. So logically, it's as if these two routers, router three and router five, are connected to one another. So can router three ping the loopback of router six? Notice the route is in the routing table, so that looks better. And notice router three can ping the loopback of router six. And if we go back to router one, router one can now ping the loopback of router six. And when we do a trace, notice it goes to router two, router three, router four, router five, and router six. This tunnel is not like a GRE tunnel. It's an OSPF mechanism. So traffic still goes via the physical links and you see every hop in the network, which you wouldn't see if you were using GRE. The virtual link is simply used for OSPF link advertisements. So in other words, to advertise routes. So we've now solved the problem. We've been able to configure the network to allow router one to ping router six. Let's have a look at some more information on router three. So show IP route. We are learning about that network as an inter area network. It's coming from a separate area. Show IP OSPF database. For area zero, notice we have router two, router three, and router five in area zero. Router five is shown as DNA. The neighbor relationship will not age. So do not age this neighbor relationship because it's set through a virtual link. So we see router link states or LSA type ones, net link states or LSA type twos, we see summary LSAs or LSA type threes. We see something similar for area one and we see external routes in the OSPF database. So that was an example of how to configure OSPF virtual links to solve a problem where you've got an area separated by another area which is not area zero. In OSPF, all areas have to touch the backbone area. In other words, area zero. So here we are extending area zero across area one to meet the OSPF design criteria. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.